are now watching the Vision Channel, where Habakkuk 2 and 2 says, Write the vision and make it plain, so they that see it can take it and run with it. This is the channel where faith and vision collide to bring forth a manifestation. You're watching the Vision Channel. I would like to welcome you to our broadcast today on the Vision Channel. Uh, you know, I'm so excited today to talk about this topic in this time. You know, there are some messages that God give you, but there are some messages that are birthed. And I truly believe that, that this is the time and this is the hour where it's time for us to prioritize. You know, we prioritize uh, pretty much everything that we do. You know, whether it's work-related, whether it's with our children, whether it's with our spouses, everything that we try to prioritize. And let me tell you what prioritizing does. Prioritizing will always draw God. Because prioritize is hidden inside of the word order how you order or structure your life. The Bible said that God does everything with decency and in order. So God prioritizes everything because of the order of God. And I'll give you a prime example from the beginning before I get to our foundational scripture. That in the beginning, when God got ready to create the earth, the earth was without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And it's in that particular verse that we get an opportunity to see exactly how God prioritized everything. So let me explain it to you. So he created the grass. He created the herbs. He created the trees. He created the sun. He created the moon. He created the waters. He created the firmaments. He gave those all responsibilities, seeds that were produced after its own kind. The sun would be the greater light. The moon would be the lesser light. Look at how God was prioritizing everything that will consist of one day, that will consist of years. So God made sure that he had to prioritize everything. And after prioritizing everything that he would have to prioritize, he would put things in position and put things in place. And then God would come back to say that after he had created everything, he said, listen, now let me make man. So before he ever made man, he had to have a place to put man because he had to prioritize. So prioritizing means God will set order. So wherever God sees you prioritizing, it reminds him of himself. It reminds him of how he fashioned, formed, it reminds him how he put things in place. Listen, until you prioritize, God don't even take you serious. Because that's what prioritizing is. Prioritizing, when God sees you can prioritize, then he release steps. The steps of a good man, they are ordered, but they are ordered by the Lord. So if they are ordered by the Lord, if God has not ordered your steps, it's because he haven't seen you in the place of prioritizing. You haven't set order. You haven't put things in position or things in place. And when heaven can see you move, then heaven will agree with your move and it will move on your behalf because of prioritization. So God only put Adam in his respective place because God had to prioritize first, because God knew that man had to work and man had to eat. And God left it to man after he prioritized to now let me show you how to prioritize. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and the fowl of the air. And let them have dominion over the cattle and everything that creepeth upon the earth. And the, the proclamation that was made over Adam's life was Adam was to till the land. So Adam, I'll start it, but you have to continue it. Prioritize. 
So God is trying to teach you today that you must prioritize. I can start something, but in order for it to continue, it's going to take your hands. It's going to take your prayers. It's going to take your diligence. So I'm calling you to prioritize in this season because when you prioritize, angels will move. God will move. The Holy Spirit will move. Jesus will move on your behalf because of prioritizing. Give you another prime example of prioritizing of how God normally works, how the kingdom of God functions and how it works. This is why God is never caught uh, with your problems. Caught, well, you know, God I, well, God didn't know that this was going to happen. No, God knows things that are going to happen before they ever happen because God prioritizes before you ever make some mistake. He already has the answer because if he is the alpha and the omega, it's not just names that we use. He's alpha and omega. For, he's Alpha and Omega for a reason. He said, I am the beginning, which is Alpha, and I'm the Omega, which is the end. God doesn't start anything unless he ends it first. So before Adam made a mistake, let me show you how God prioritized. The Bible said Jesus was slain before the foundation of the world. So before Adam ate any fruit, before Eve ate any fruit, look at the prioritizing of heaven because God had already prioritized in vision, Jesus being the finisher, he being the omega at the end. So it started in the end. It started with Jesus being on the cross. It started with him being slain. Before the foundation of the world, Jesus was slain. So look at how God prioritized that when Adam came into place, God had already had victory. He had already defeated an enemy because he prioritized as the end before the beginning so he prioritizes and God is trying to tell you that this is the time and the hour to prioritize and as we get into our scriptures today that I'm going to tell you about prioritizing and you have to take it serious you know I, I think that we as as a culture and I'm not talking about whether it's a white culture or black culture. I'm talking about a Christian culture, us as a culture. God doesn't want us to function just in church alone or function or we just come to church. It's greater than that. God doesn't just want church. He desires this generation. He desires to win this generation back. Please hear me. Please, I want you to hear what I'm getting ready to say. You know, we talk about in 1 Kings chapter 18, we talk about how Elijah, how powerful Elijah was, how Elijah erected an altar back and they put water on the altar and they say he called down fire. And we talk about how he prioritized everything and how he assembled and how he got the prophets of Baal. 400 that sat at a table, but 450 prophets of Baal. 850 prophets were present when he made his performance, when he called down fire. But it was never about him calling down fire. Before he ever said anything, he said, Lord, he said, let me tell you this. In this generation, in this time, he said, I want you, this, is, this right here is the act. I've done everything that you told me to do. Now, I'm turning the heart of the father back to the heart of the children. The children's heart got to be turned back into their fathers. Not their natural father, but it was the spiritual father. That was an ordinance that God had set in the earth realm. But he was trying to prioritize that when they turned their hearts back to me, then I would turn my heart back to them. And Elijah understood the prioritizing of now changing the hearts of men back to the heart of the father. So when he called down fire, it wasn't some kind of presentation that he was trying to show he was trying to bring the ordinance and the statues and he was prioritizing secretly to try to get God now to move manifestedly so he manifested something by when he prioritized it but the prioritization started when the hearts of the children turned back to the heart of the father do you know that's exactly what Elijah said Elijah said it, then John the Baptist would come back and say it in his own time, that he's turning the hearts of the father back, turn the hearts of the children back to the hearts of the father. They had the same language. Why? Because they carried the same spirit. And God was trying to prioritize his people. I want you to hear a word today. The word today, what God is trying to do. God is trying to do this here. He's trying to do this here. I hear the word diaspora. 
if you don't know what diaspora means, diaspora means that's a, a, a scattering of God's sheep, a scattering of his people, but God is trying to bring those people back. And because he's bringing those people back, he's calling for those. See, this is what we could just consider to be that, that um, sheep. We, we could say, well, you're talking about different churches. God is bringing all the sheep in. No, this is even for the lost sheep. Even Jesus was trying to prioritize. He said, listen, I've only come for the lost sheep. So there are some sheep that are lost. And he said, listen, I'm trying to prioritize. The people that are in the church are the people that are in the church. But there are some that are outside of the church. Well, the church has heard. And Jesus said, I'm coming for the lost sheep. They're lost, but they are still my sheep. This is why the Bible said Jesus would leave the 99 and go after the one. Who in the world is the one where Jesus would leave the 99 and go after them? Because he was saying that even those that are lost are too precious to me. I know the church have forgotten about the lost. He said, but no, I'm prioritizing. I'm putting the 99 and keeping them safe while I go after the one that's unsafe. Because they're the lost sheep, I have to prioritize. And so he's looking for us in this season to prioritize. The Bible also says in the New Testament, who can build the house without first counting the cost? Who can go to the war without counting the expense? You have to learn to prioritize. And God is trying to get you to prioritize, not only naturally, but God is trying to get you to prioritize spiritually. How is your prayer life? How is the place where you worship? How is the place of your giving? How is the place of your surrendering? It makes no sense for you to only prepare naturally. I'm prioritizing by prioritizing my clothes to go to church. But what are you clothed in? Are you clothed in righteousness? Are you clothed with the garment of praise? There are garments that you can put on throughout scriptures. You can find some in Isaiah chapter 61 where there's a garment of praise. And God is trying to give you the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. But there has to be a prioritizing in your life for God to move in your life. There are mysteries that God is getting ready to reveal to the body of Christ. Why? Because he's trying to get them to prioritize. I'm going to read you this passage of scripture that we got and I want you to hear what I'm getting ready to say. I'm not going to be long today. I'm not going to be long today. But I truly want us to, to hear what I'm getting ready to say. Because this is real important to God. Because God would never establish a move without him finishing the move. Let me give you a mystery today. If you feel like you're stuck, if you feel like you've been in a position too long, let me give you a mystery spiritually. Let me give you one spiritually, and the mystery that I'm going to give you spiritually, we hear the verse, we hear the scripture, but I want you to know and understand this mystery today. If you feel like you're stuck, and I know you've gone to church, and I know you've prayed, and I know you've probably fasted, but the Bible says that if you are in Christ, then this is where you have your being. Your being, your functionality. There is no identity without Christ. So you can only find your being in him. According to the book of John, all things were made by him and for him. And without him was not anything made. So in order for an individual to reveal your identity, you must first go to the being that created you so that you can understand and know what your being is. Know who you are. One of the greatest issues in the body of Christ that we have is we come to church but don't know who we are. We come to church but don't know our purpose. I hear it all the time. What am I called to do? What do you think God wants me to do? You hear it all the time. But in order to get that identity, your identity is hidden in Christ. He know why he sent you to this earth realm. Don't think that you're here haphazardly. Don't think that you're some kind of accident. Don't think because you and your mother just came here or you and your mother and your father, your mother and your father got together and all of a sudden the result came out, it was you. No, it was strategic. God prioritized everything about you in order to release you. He did it for a reason. So let me read you my scripture because I'm getting excited. We're going to go to Genesis chapter 6. I'm going to read Genesis chapter 6, verse 8, 
and verse 9, and then we're going to go to Genesis chapter 4 to try to validate how God prioritized you in the earth realm. I want you to hear this. It said, but Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. That's verse 8. Verse 9, these are the generations of Noah. Noah was a just man and perfect in his generation, and Noah walked with God. Now, go to Genesis chapter 5 with me. To chapter 4. Genesis chapter 5. Genesis chapter 5, I'm going to start at verse 28, and I'm going to read verses 28 and 29. And Lamech lived 182 years and begot a son, and he called his name Noah, saying, This same shall comfort us concerning the work and the toil of our hands because of the ground which the Lord had cursed. Now, I'm, I'm going to stop it here before I go back. And I want to read verse 29 again so that we can get an understanding of why some people come here. Why so, and I know you may think you may be a product of passion or heat. No. God release you. Watch this. Say, and he called his name Noah, saying, this same shall comfort us concerning our work and the toil of our hands because the ground which the Lord hath cursed. Now, in order to understand what I'm in reference to, you would have to go all the way back to Genesis chapter 4. Genesis chapter 3. This is concerning the work and the toil of our hands from the curse of the land. Remember when God told Adam, after Adam and Eve had partook of the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And God told Adam, from this moment forward, the ground will no longer respond to you from a productive place. But he said, thorns and thistles will grow. And from the sweat of your brow shall you eat the sorrow of it all the days of your life. So because of that, when you look throughout history, when you look throughout scriptures, until you get to Genesis chapter 5, we understand the purpose of Noah because God didn't just send Noah just for Lamech to have a son. He sent Noah here for a purpose, and God had to reveal that purpose to his father because it says this one here was called here to reverse the work and the toll of our hand from the curse of the land. So there was a curse from Adam. God blocked out. Cain, he didn't even look at the descendants of Cain. He started back over with a different people. So God now was looking in the earth. And let me take this so, I can, so you can understand. We, we minimize who, the life of Noah because we only say that Noah built a boat. Please, it is one of the misguided or misunderstood conceptions that we have in Christendom because we don't understand why he was sent Yes, he built a boat. We got it. It took him 120 years to build. But we don't understand the dynamic. So let me explain to you the authority of one person who prioritized. When God looked at his life, he saw the prioritization. He saw the order that was in his life. He saw how he had structured one man. So God saved the man because of how he prioritized and the structure. His purpose was that he was going to reverse the curse and till from the toil of the works of our hand from the land that was cursed. So the first responsibility that that Noah had that his father knew that he can reverse curses he wasn't just sent he didn't just come he was sent if you don't understand that people can be sent Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 5 it said before I formed you I knew you I sanctified you and I ordained you to be a prophet among the nations. So God sent Jeremiah because he had a purpose and God would never send you to this earth. So let me explain. He would never send you to this earth. He would never send you to this generation. So why wasn't you born in the 1800s? Why wasn't you born in the 1400s? 
Why wasn't you born in the 1300s? So why would God position you to be in this generation on this kind? So when you read what I said earlier in, in, in chapter 5, it said, and Noah himself, chapter 6, and the this was the generation of Noah. It wasn't Noah's generation, but God had placed Noah in, this, in the generation that he was in in order to make change. So God has placed you. It doesn't matter your age. It doesn't matter your pedigree. God is trying to tell you that I place you in this generation so I can bring change to this generation, change to a nation, change to this entire world. I birthed you here for this specific time and this specific place, but it's time for you now to prioritize me. Okay? We understand in Matthew chapter 6 and verse 33, this is where the prioritization starts. It says, seek ye first the kingdom of God in all of his righteousness, and all these things shall be added. It's the prioritizing. God said, make me first. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and all of his righteousness and everything you need according to after you have prioritized that then all these things will be added if there's things missing would you check your prioritization would you check to see if God and the kingdom of God are you seeking him first when you seek the kingdom first God now comes back to say and all these other things will be added why because the earth understands order it understands prioritization. It understands that. And God is trying to tell you that if, if you don't know the significance behind Noah, I'm going to explain it to you. The Bible said when it came down to Genesis, God said, I did not make a man. I cannot have it to rain because I don't have anyone to till the land. If you go back in Genesis chapter 2, Genesis chapter 3, God explains it. The reason why I haven't, haven't made rain to come down yet because I don't have a man to till the land. Now, I want you to hear this. Because Adam was a tiller, but there was no rain. His son, Cain, who took the same responsibilities... As Adam picked up his work ethic, picked up his trade, but still no rain came down. Cain killed Abel, no rain. Seth came. All the other people that was in the earth realm came, but God still did not have any person to bring the rain to, even though his father knew his responsibility, but the curse of the land, that, that no rain had ever came. Nobody had ever even seen rain. So dew came up, but rain never came down. So what God is trying to tell you that today, that when it came to Noah's life, he said that I found now a man that I can send rain. So every other person that was in the earth realm, from Noah all the way up into Adam, from Lamech all the way up into Adam, no one was qualified to be a tiller because this tiller wasn't just of anything naturally. This tilling was only to prioritize, to be able to deal spiritually. So here what I'm telling you today, that had to be a balance. And because now Noah had walked with God and talked with God and he had prioritized his life. See, when, when prioritization comes... God will only give you more things to prioritize. He said, and Noah walked with God, and Noah was perfect in that generation, and the only person that God did not kill. He said, it repented me that I made man. But because Noah, you know what the name Noah means? See, I like to sometimes express names because it gives you a deeper meaning behind the individual that God had chose. The name Noah means comfort and rest. You know, when, it, when scriptures tell us when God created the earth, it said, and God rested on the seventh day. So when Noah was born, do you know what that means? God found comfort 
and rest, the same rested where he rested on the seventh day. When Noah was released into the earth realm, God said, ha, ah, now I know I found comfort and rest. I found rest in a man. I have been restless because I desire to kill man from the face of the earth. He said, it repeated me that I made one, but I found one where I found comfort. I found peace. I found rest. God found rest in one man. And God began to tell him that I need you to build me an ark. It's time. It's time to build. And God would never have you to build outwardly if you wouldn't build inwardly first. The first prioritization starts when you allow God to work in you and work on you so that the manifestation could be seen around you. The first prioritization starts when you allow God to work in you first. There must be an inner work. You must allow him to build. Remove everything that's not like him. If the heart is hard, this is why God said, I'll remove the heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. If the heart is broken, he said, let me prioritize it so that I can still use you. I'm close to a broken heart and a contrite spirit. So God began to prioritize, start working on the inner you so that he can manifest himself around you so that he can now use you. The inner working, but in order for him to prioritize, you have to prioritize your time. You have to prioritize that time to give back to God and how you prioritize. Let me, let me say this because I know we've heard this saying so many times. But let me say, let me say this to you today. That whether you realize it or not, this old earth will pass away. Remember, there will be a new heaven and there will be a new earth. And this one that we're in is getting ready to pass away. Please hear what I'm getting ready to say. I'm not a prophet of doom, but I'm a prophet to where I can hear what God is saying. I want you to watch the weather patterns. Oh my God. Every time that God got ready to do something, the weather patterns changed. He was telling Noah that the weather pattern is getting ready to change. Remember the Bible said when Jesus is getting ready to come back, there will be wars and rumors of wars. There will be earthquake in diverse places. There are so many things that will transpire. But Jesus is saying, I'm trying to use the weather to show you. I'm trying to use the earth to show you. And God was saying, I'm getting ready to do something in your time, Noah, that has never been seen. And God is trying to tell us that I'm trying to get the body of Christ to prioritize because I'm getting ready to do something in this earth that has never been seen in our generation, in our time. But he said, in order for me to do it, I'm trying to get the body of Christ to prioritize. He told Noah, I need you to build. Build me an ark. It didn't make sense to build an ark. Gave him the dimensions on how to build it. Now the ark has a significance. It does. Because God told him to build it in three different dimensions. I need you to build it three stories. Three, if you don't know what it represents, there are three dimensions or three heavens. You got the first heavens, which is the earth. The second heavens is where Satan and all of his angels, the principalities and all of them dwell. And there's a third heaven, as Paul would say, I was caught up in the third heavens. So we know that there are three heavens. He had him to he had him to build it based on the dimensions according to the heavens, according to the triunion of Christ, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. He had him to build it according to those three. And, and notice this: I want you to see this: that the third heavens has windows. <laughs> 
He said, I want you to put a window in the third heavens. So when God is ready to pour out a blessing, there's always a window. I'll pour you out a blessing. I'll open the windows of heaven. So the third heaven, there was a simulation of the third heavens being just like the heavens. So you'll be able to look out as I look out when I come to the heavens. So God was using Noah in a place and he's trying to use us to try to get us. This is why we're seated with him in heavenly places. Far more principalities because it's in another dimension. It's in the third heavens. And God is saying we can see from this realm. We can be from this realm. We can function from this realm. But in order to get to this realm, you have to prioritize. You know what prioritizing is? Prepare. Are you prepared? Are you prepared to go where you want to go? Are you prepared to pray what you've been praying for? Have you prioritized to get you to that place? Yes, you say you want a new house, but have you prioritized to get to that place? Have you prepared to get to that place? And not just you getting your credit right naturally, but is your credit right with God spiritually so you can go into that new dimension? And God is telling Noah that I need you to prioritize and I need you to prepare for something that you have not seen yet. You haven't seen what's coming. I'm showing you that this is what's transpiring and taking place. But I'm using the weather patterns because when the weather change, it only means that what I spoke is getting ready to happen. And there are things that are getting ready to take place in the heavens. There are things that are getting ready to take place in the earth. I want you to hear me because I see thunderstorms, lightning. I see whirlwinds. I see all of this trying to come into the earth realm now to cause chaos and destruction. But it's only a sign that Christ is coming. And he's trying to get the body of Christ to prioritize, to prepare for what is to come. There is no person scriptorial that he didn't use. That Joseph was in place to be able to hear Pharaoh's dream. Seven fatted calves, seven lean calves, and the lean calves ate the fat calves. The other corn ate the other. So he put, he put Joseph in position in the earth realm to prioritize for what's coming. And God is trying to tell you today that I've only placed you in this generation that you will prioritize, that you will prepare for what is to come so that you can save people. Because when it came down to Noah, his entire family was saved. And God is trying to use you to prioritize your life, to save Save your family to build something, build a relationship that will save your family, that will save generations, that will save grandkids, that will save your children. God is trying to use you in this generation, but he's telling you to prioritize. For 120 years. And I want you to see this because I'm, I'm showing you some similarities. Why God did what he did with Noah. You think it's a coincidence that how man fell, that how man would prevail? Man fell by what? What was the first mistake that man ever made? The first mistake that man ever made was by a tree. Wood. The tree of the knowledge of good and evil. So God would have Noah to come back to the same tree to save mankind. It was a foretelling. It was something that was to come, that Christ would come back to the same tree, that everything that now that hung on the tree would be us. It would be family. But he was using Noah in his generation to go back to the wood, back to the tree where man fell and say, now build me an ark. Build me an ark, and after you build me an ark, let me show you what I'll do. Now watch this. Since we minimize Noah's life, and I want you to see this, the parallel between Noah and Adam. The parallel is God brought the animals to Adam to see what he would name them. <laughs> Adam named every animal. He brought them to him. When you look at Noah's life, as he builds the ark, he now brings the animals back to Noah. He brought them two by two 
Watch this, please hear this. Make no mistake about this. Remember when Adam lost the mind of God, everything in his community, everything in the earth realm, because the earth realm is only governed by man. So if man does something, then the earth will respond to how the man is because according to Psalm chapter 8, he's given the works of his hand unto men. He's given the earth into the hands of men. That's exactly what Psalm chapter 8 say. He's made us a little lower. Our Bible said a little lower than the angels, but the original language say Elohim, which means he's only made us a little lower than God. So Jesus would come back to say, as he's teaching the Pharisees and the Sadducees, he said, did not it say in your scriptures that we were gods? I'm not saying you are the G-O-D, but God has fashioned us and formed us in his image and after his likeness. So Adam functioned in the earth realm just like God. So when it came down to Noah's life, God is trying to tell you that just as it was with Adam as I brought the animals to Adam, but when Adam failed, the animals lost their first nature, and now they begin to attack one another because Adam lost his mind, and how the animals function was the mind of Adam, which Adam functioned from the mind of God. So God is trying to restore the first thing that he gave mankind was his original intent, was to give us back his mind. So this is why the Bible says, let this mind be in you that's also in Christ Jesus because God is trying to give us his mind back so we can prioritize our life a whole lot better. As a matter of fact, when it came to the book of Psalms, I think it's in Psalms chapter 90 and verse 12. I hope I'm saying this right. It said, teach me to number my days. If God is teaching you, if you ask him, it's a prayer. Lord, teach me to number my days. You know what that means? That means if you're telling him to teach you to number your days, that your days would never go not according to how God has prioritized it. Lord, teach me to number my days. So if he's teaching you, he's giving you instructions, he's ordering your steps, and you're learning to prioritize with the small prayer, teach me to number my days, is prioritization. So with Noah, these animals, whether you believe it or not, because we don't understand the, the anointing and the grace that God had with Noah, it said he brought the animals, and the animals didn't desire one another because of the anointing that was on the man. That means no animal could die. No animal could attack man. No animal could attack beast. God changed something about their appetite because of the prioritization of Noah and what he had on his life. So what am I trying to tell you? That when you get in the real place with God, there won't be no fussing, no cussing in your community. There won't be no gang violence. There won't be no rapes. There won't be any of that. Why? Because you've gotten God's presence and Noah walked with God. And God is trying to get us to walk in such a way that chaos and confusion and different mindsets will be stopped and will be silent all because we prioritize Noah had prioritized his life and the animals came and didn't have a desire for man nor didn't have a desire for beast they laid down their life when they came into the ark all because Noah carried that grace to where confusion chaos and murder would not be established with it and God is trying to get you the reason why there's confusion how is there confusion and God is not the author the Bible said God is not the author of confusion. So wherever you have found confusion, you have found the author. God is not the author of confusion. So where you find it, it's because something is out of order and some door or some portal has been opened in an individual's life or a family's life and God is calling you to bring, he's causing you to bring comfort in the place where there's chaos so there won't be any more confusion. But you have to prioritize your life. Look at the grace that God gave one man so you know why the Bible said, and Noah found grace. The first time that we ever see grace and we think grace is God suspending the rule of sin or error. No. Grace was for work. Grace, God was waiting on the man that he gave grace because he was waiting for him to finish what he told him to prioritize. And God is waiting for the body of Christ to finish what he told them to prioritize. The Bible said that we are workmen. 
We are workers with Christ. We are heirs and joint heirs. There's an assignment. When Jesus came at the age of 12 years old, he showed us how he prioritized at the age of 12. Don't you know I must be about my father's business? Look at the prioritization of Jesus at the age of 12. I must be about my father's business. I must prioritize. And ultimately, after Noah prioritized for 120 years. God never even allowed Noah to close the door of the ark. No. The Bible says God closed the door, but not only him closing the door, God had to seal it that no water can get in. You know what that means? Everything that was in the ark was saved. Everything that was in that ark was saved. Everything that was associated with it, his sons, his sons' wives, his wife, everything that was in that ark was saved because of the prioritization, because how he prioritized. Now, I'm saying all this to say this. If you do any studying on Noah, the Bible said Noah was a righteous preacher. He's preaching righteousness what everybody else is doing wrong. The Bible said they were getting drunk, getting married, and getting married. What does that sound like today? Does it sound like our generation? Does it sound like our time? Does it sound like this is the stuff that we are doing and we're functioning? Does it sound like this is the way the world functions? Does it sound that way? But if you didn't know, the Bible said this, just as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be when the Son of Man return. So I'm telling you today, the only reason why I brought out Noah, because Christ said, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be when the Son of Man return. They shall be eating, drinking, and being married. But they're not prioritizing the kingdom's assignment. God is telling you, you see the weather patterns, that things are getting ready to happen. In the weather patterns, watch, and it's only a sign that his arrival is even closer. Hear me, I'm telling you, I have a burning in my heart. There's a burning in my spirit to let you know that he only waited until he completed his assignment. Grace was only given before judgment. And God is trying to prepare the body of Christ before judgment comes. The Bible said that he would come like a thief in the night. Will you be prepared? Will you prioritize? Or will you think that you're going to stay? This place is not your home. There is an eternal resting place. That eternal resting place is either heaven or that eternal resting place is hell. This place or what we know or call earth, I told you, will pass away. Because there will be a new heaven. And there will be a new earth. Have you prioritized where you're going? Have you prioritized your life to where you know that your eternal resting place won't be in the cemetery? It'll be in heaven. Or will you be in the smoking section? Will you be in hell where everybody's smoking? Not smoking cigarettes, but smokers coming from their bodies, being afflicted. Hear what I'm telling you today. Today it is time to prioritize your life. Will you prioritize today? This was a serious message for me. This is a serious time in the body of Christ. This is not time to play church. This is not time for you not to for you to waste time. It's not that time. 
It's not the hour. And some of you may watch this broadcast and you may be asking the question. Man, I'm not even in Christ. What must I do to be saved? Let me show you this. Let me show you how to prioritize for the relationship. Those that call upon the name of the Lord will be saved, shall be saved. So God is saying, if you call, he'll come. You don't have to know the scriptures. You don't even have to have a church experience. He said, those that call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Just call on his name. Tell him. I, I know in church, I know some people are going to frown upon what I'm getting ready to say. Yeah, there is a sinner's prayer that we've concocted. There is some documents that we've written that talk about salvation. And you have to say the sinner's prayer. Just repeat these words for me. I'm a sinner. Yes, I've committed sins and error, Lord. I'm asking you to do something with me, heal me and forgive me. All of that's great. And you can use that. You can use this as a platform. But tonight I'm not using that. Today I'm not using that. When the thief was on the cross, all he said was, Lord, remember me. Hear what I'm telling you. Look how he prioritized. He got himself together. He asked, Lord, just remember me when you go into heaven. Just remember me. And Jesus, no sinner's prayer. Just remember. And Jesus said, this day you would be with me in paradise. No church. No rituals. No practices. Lord, just remember, he called him Lord. Those that call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Salvation came because he prioritized his life before his life ended. I'm extending it tonight. I'm extending it today. That call on his name. Call upon the name of the Lord and you will, shall be saved. I pray that I said something today to where you understood it. My God, you understood the importance of prioritization. Are you prioritizing? Are you valuing time? Or will you waste it? Because time is not something that you can give back unless God redeems it. Program your day. I thank you for tuning in today, for watching us on the Vision Channel. And we'll see you next Saturday on Christ is King.